Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. We're worth part two with the Xbox CXT team talking about how they do bicep. So tune in now. We're back this week on the DevOps Lab with the Xbox CXT team. And with us this week, we have Kate and Solis. So Kate, welcome to the show again. Hello, guys. Great to have you here. So for everyone that's tuned in, watching, hearing about how Xbox does Bicep and how you use Bicep every day, can you just explain to everyone out there, what it is you do for the team? So um, I'm currently uh, with the CXT team at Xbox. It's a customer experience team, and uh, we are responsible for a lot of things, but um, our major responsibility is support xbox.com and uh, all providing our customers with the instant answers for any problems they're facing with our services or with the console or with the mobile experience. Um, I'm an engineer uh, in, in CXT team, and I have also a bunch of responsibilities um, that includes developing services, supporting existing ones, developing CI CD pipeline. Um, and one of one of my responsibilities is writing uh, CI CD pipelines with um, ARM or BICEP uh, mm -hmm. technology. And so that's, that's it. <laughs> awesome. Well, and this is such a critical topic. And I talk a lot about the support.xbox.com site because when there's an outage or they need to contact the Xbox team, it's critical not only the site's up, but all the features that plug into it are ready for the end users because that's an important experience for them. Yes, that's that's correct. And uh, our team went through uh, multiple iterations on mm -hmm. how we do CI CD pipelines. And we definitely started uh, with manual deployments at first and then slowly progressed to ARM deployments and then um, ARM deployments were not uh, exactly w very easy. Um, there's a lot of drawbacks of using ARM, but it was at the time the only good technology to automate uh, our builds uh, and to automate infrastructure creation. So when Bicep came along, we jumped on board because Bicep seems to be very easy, um, very readable and had a lot of advantages over ARM. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I would like to say that we primarily develop Bicep. Uh, we no longer use ARM. Uh, we use ARM only for legacy. And right now, Bicep provides a really good uh, decompiler. I'm sure people mm -hmm. uh, working with Biceps are, Bicep are familiar with it. Um, we decompile all our uh, old ARM templates, uh, all ARM templates uh, in JSON format to Bicep. And... Um, basically clean it up and use it in, in our new CI CD pipelines. Awesome. So take it away and show us how you guys are using Bicep today. Sure. Uh, so uh, I would like to start by just showing a small demo um, of what would what would be the sim very simple project structure look like. And I would like to just go over the, uh, the structure that our team prefers. So we definitely have a main Bicep file where it's sort of like the entry level to bicep code where we specify different parameters and we uh, start like basically um, uh, listing the modules that we use for, uh, uh, for, for the main uh, file, for the main structure. Um, so this is our uh, infra release bicep. Um, the naming conventions changed, but we try to keep it very readable and simple. One thing that I really appreciate is Bicep, how Bicep works well with Visual Studio Code and especially Bicep ex extension um, that allows you to visualize your um, your Bicep uh, file in sort of like a visual blocks to see what what you are actually creating to visualize it. Um, so I definitely appreciate this feature. Um, also, uh, what I really like is the IntelliSense um, that comes together with this extension. Uh, the best way to show it, it would probably be uh, right here. So a lot of times we want to know with uh, what kind of uh, SDK we're working on for Bicep. And this intelligence is really neat. It gives us the ability to see all of the different um, templates mm -hmm. right here and which ones are the newest. They always come on top. So I'm using the preview version here uh, for production. I I would be cautious using preview, but since it's just a demo and it's the latest and greatest, we still could show it. Um, 
So back back to our infrastructure. So right here we have a shared folder, and we have a very similar uh, similar way of um, naming it in, in our prod code as well, where we have these modules in a shared location so that other projects um, and microservices can use the same um, bicep modules without writing them over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why we keep the shared modules uh, very, very simple and readable. And all the additional spe project-specific parameters we keep in the main or project-specific modules, which are going together with a project um, folder structure. So, um, so in this particular um, demo, what, what's happening is that I'm creating, um, first I'm creating a, uh, just a resource group, and let's go ahead and create it. So it's successfully created, and I, I just used the Azure CLI to create it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to run this bicep file. And this bicep file creates a whole bunch of things. First, it, cre it creates the um, basic structure for ML AI projects. So in ML AI projects uh, that work with ML uh, Azure Workspace, uh, we definitely create machine learning workspace, but we also create the machine compute together. So it really depends what you're using. For our majority of our scenarios, we use AKS, mm -hmm. um, Azure Kubernetes solution. So um, in this particular example, we, we, we will also create um, Kubernetes and we will create the compute. Um, now, because it's also a demo, I used very, very basic compute, so it won't take a lot of time and resources because you also have to be very mindful about your quota for subscription, but I'm sure a lot of people who are familiar with AKS deployment already know that. Um, so let's go ahead and start this solution. Um, for this particular one, I'm using, um, well, let's rename it. Um, I'm just going to use the Azure C uh, CLI to uh, start the deployment, and I have a couple of parameters. So one of the parameters is specifying the resource group that we just created, which mm -hmm. is a de demo ML. Uh, then we have a template file, which is our main file, uh, infra release bicep, and we have parameters. So in this case, I have a couple parameters. Uh, one of them is prefix. So the reason for it is just the environment name. Um, in production, we call it environments. So we have a whole bunch of environments like dev uh, and UAT and production. Uh, so in this particular case, we want, uh, we'll just have production uh, and the project name demo. Uh, so, and let's, let's start the deployment. Azure deployments usually take a while, but the good, um, good visual idea that your deployment is working uh, would be just observing the terminal and console. Because if you had any kind of, uh, uh, maybe a syntax error, it would show it right away here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you had any re resource misnamings um, that are not supported uh, by Bicep uh, Orchestrator and uh, Resource Manager, it would show up uh, in, as a red exception uh, right even before starting to create resources, which is really, really handy. Um, so while it's running in, I would like to show you guys our portal. And one other neat feature, um, uh, about Azure and uh, really nice implementation with CI/CD pipeline is uh, is uh, this view here. So it's our basically this is our demo ML resource group that we just created, and right here as you can see we already start seeing the resources that we're creating with a bicep demo as of right now. It, now it's still deploying, uh, so you would want you would probably want to see the status. So we're gonna go here and we're gonna actually see what resources are already created, uh, some metadata about the resources we are creating here. Um, one second. Um, and, uh, and just the status of what, what's happening. Um, now, a lot of time, now there might be times when you will see exceptions, so you will get more metadata about the error or uh, anything that's happening with your deployment right away. But this is just a neat visual way to, to just know what's happening and what could be the cause uh, of the problem. Um, yeah, so we can go in into any resource that is already created. 
And here, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have the deployment details that you can download and see how uh, what what was happening during deployment, or you can just just go proceed to the to their actual resource. And well, in this case, it's App Insights inst instance, and uh, yeah, it's still um, we still need to finish the whole whole deployment. So our deployment is completed, as you can see, everything uh, completed with su status success. Now let's go in and actually see our resources and see what we created. Um, and so as you can see, we have a Kubernetes instance. We have an application inside instance for uh, any type of logging and metrics, metrics and monitoring. We have container registry uh, for this. It's just for this demo I created it. You might need or not need it. We have Key Vault and we have machine learning, um, uh, machine learning workspace environment. Now currently it's empty, but uh, if you're working with data scientist, then data scientist probably will populate it with a model and with a scoring file um, and with any, any kind of Python packages. So that could go in either in Bicep or as a, another step post, post Bicep infrastructure state deployment where you would just use either PowerShell to create the resources or, um, or just do it manually. It's up to, um, up to your preference. Um, but these end and at the end is just the storage account. Um, so as you can tell, this is very, very basic, but it, for our Azure ML and Ops DevOps, this is very basic solution. Um, a lot of our micro microservices that are deploying to Azure, to Kubernetes, you use it. Um, but it's very mind. scalable. It's very resilient. It's got all those pieces that we need, right? Oh yeah, Bicep to provide, um, if you go into the Microsoft documentation for Bicep, Bicep has a whole bunch of parameters for different type of resources, specifically for Kubernetes and container registry. I would recommend just going through uh, through the parameters and um, specifying it in Bicep, but it's also uh, on project to project needs. Uh, my my personal favorite, and also we, uh, we practice it in teams, is um, uh, just create as minimum parameters as possible mm -hmm. and only use what you need uh, because yeah, it doesn't come with the whole bunch of presets and um, sometimes they're not needed. Um, but it's also nice to know what you're creating in Azure. Um, nice to know because you, you later on troubleshoot it. Um, I also like to say that uh, we work as a team uh, and we have a whole bunch of really cool engineers in our team uh, working with me. And we try strive for, for really nice and reusable pipelines, but of course we're not perfect. And it's a uh, project to pro project basis, um, but yeah. <laughs> awesome. And you can always continuously iterate those and make those better with the, every sprint cycle. Exactly, yeah. And since uh, Bicep is also evolving, it's really nice to keep track of all the new iterations that Bicep provides, uh, for, uh, especially for best, uh, better login, because that's when you really need to understand what that error code means or what that error message means when you create resources. Awesome. Kate, thank you so much for telling us about how the Xbox CXT team uses Bicep. So thank you for joining us again on the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.